Well, thanks for coming. I want to start out by giving an example of a signature story. And uh, as you watch this video, think to yourself, is this to me intriguing? Does this feel authentic? Is this involving? Does it draw me in? So can you play the video? Ah! Push! Push! Ayo tidur dulu, Tari. Biar besok bisa bangun pagi. Besok dia akan ulang tahun. Besok hari penting buatku. Usia aku lima tahun. Jadi rahimnya, anakku. Isn't that incredible? I'm going to make four observations about this signature story. First of all, it's really powerful. It is intriguing. Don't you wonder what Otari was doing, being so obsessed with the tree and taking care of the tree? And, uh, and then we get kind of a, a, a surprise. We find out that that tree she marked when, her, when she knew she was going to have a baby. And that tree has been the symbol of the baby's growth. And now the baby reached five. And, uh, uh, and, and isn't it authentic? It, uh, we get to know Atari. We get to know her father. We even see the village that we're living in. It is nothing but real. It has to be authentic to us. It, uh, and, and third, it's involving, isn't it? You get drawn in. You get emotionally involved in the, in the, in the whole story. And uh, you really care. So it's powerful. Second thing is that it communicates facts. Now, we know from all kinds of research that if you put uh, facts out there, you know, a list of four or five or six, seven facts, like two million children are, die before the age of five, and, uh, and uh, there's a Life Boy program that involves all kinds of things in the school and out of the school, and that will affect this mortality. You put a bunch of facts out there, people don't attend to them. They don't notice them. Their brain kind of says, you know, here's three or four or five facts, should I process them? I'll probably forget them. I, they probably won't have any use for me. I'll just ignore them. Facts get ignored. And the worst thing is, even if they get processed, even if people, for one reason or another, process these facts, they don't persuade. And there's a, several reasons for that, but one of them is you have counter-arguing. When you see facts, the natural inclination is to say, 
you know, this guy's trying to persuade me. What is he not telling me? You know, uh, maybe five million children. How does he know it's five million children? Where does he get the data? And how do you know that this washing hands is going to affect that and how much it'll affect it? Maybe it'll just have a tiny effect. There's counter-arguing. So now think, uh, enter story. So instead of pretty, uh, the facts, we tell a story. And, uh, and what, what we can do is we can slip the facts into the story. So when you hear the story, you come to know that there's a problem with infant mortality. And it's related to hand washing. And so they slip that in. And, but even more important, they, uh, they set you up so now the facts are relevant. So now you're willing to process facts. And you remember them because they're, they're attached to the story. So we have some facts that are kind of within the story, but then we have some facts at the end. And the story motivates you to process those facts. The third thing is that this video is incredibly successful. 11 million people watch this video. And it costs nothing for LifeBoy to put it out there. 11 million people watched it. And not only that, but there was two companion videos. One of them had a uh, girl named Shaka that was seven years old. And she represented a unborn baby projected forward seven years. So she was sort of, uh, not a ghost, but a projection commenting on her seven years. That hadn't occurred yet, but will occur. And she talked to her, it was a, she was talking to her mother, and she talked about how she sang lullabies, how she read stories, and how she washed her hands. And the girl was so grateful that her mother had done that. That got 14 million views. The three of them together got 44 million views. And that doesn't count all the, uh, uh, all the uh, sort of press results or press accounts of this whole program and these signature stories within this program. Um, and, and it also created a, a nice feeling. You watch this, this, this video and you feel good, don't you? You feel good about the program, Help a Child Reach Five. You feel good about Life Boy. And there's some people that even feel good about Unilever. But most people don't know Life Boy is made by Unilever. Unilever, incidentally, is, is, is a company I admire more than any other because of their philosophy of business. It's quite remarkable. Um, but that, that feeling in the video gets transferred to the brand. And, and we know that's true. Again, uh, hundreds of research studies. We know if you like an ad, you're going to like the brand that did the ad. It, that, it, there's, it gets transferred. We know that. Um, and it was successful in helping this program help a child reach five. Uh, because LifeBoy is one half of their goal of getting a billion people to change their hand washing habits. They're halfway there after eight years. And this video helped them get there. Fourth thing I wanted to say is that this is a signature story. And a signature story is intriguing, gets attention. It is authentic. And that means that things, words like phony, selling, this is just a selling job, they don't enter your mind if it's authentic. It's involving. That means you get drawn in. And that's one of the most powerful characteristics in any story. Um, and it's a narrative. That means it's sort of once upon a time, this happened, and then that happened. And uh, it's, uh, it's not a set of facts. And it, takes, it has a strategic message. In this case, the strategic message is about uh, you know, explaining the, the infant mortality rate, the fact that the hand washing can, can prevent that. And there is a program. It's Help a Child Reach Five. And it's done by Lifebuoy. Um, 
and it, I should say also, it's a strategic story for this program, Help a Child Reach Five. It's a strategic story for Lifebuoy, the brand Lifebuoy. And in some cases, it's for some people, it's a signature story for Unilever. If you look at the Unilever annual report, you'll see a reference to the story. Um, so why, why do we use signature stories for firms? Let me give you two reasons. First of all, again, there's study after study after study, probably 500 studies that, that demonstrate vividly that if you compare facts to a story that has the same general content, a story will be, uh, get more attention. It will, be, uh, it will persuade. It will change perceptions. It will be remembered. And it will be passed on much more than facts. And these, we're not talking about a little bit of an improvement. We're talking about orders of magnitude, two times, five times, 10 times. And the second reason we use signature stories, come back to the digital world we're living in. When market, marketers struggle, how do we cope with the digital world? Things are different. My take on digital is that content is king, and content means stories. So company after company are learning that uh, it's, it's good to actually hire journalists, have a little department, and create and manage stories. 